it's a pretty good one. Okay, well, there we go. Well, hello. I lost three days' worth of recordings due to a stupid missed delete. So I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to create a convertible. It's not going to be anything particularly amazing, but I'm going to put on those uh, clear windows and interior mods that I've uh, been coveting for a long time. So this is going to be a very basic kind of uh, BMW 1 Series type uh, M car. So it's going to be steel. We're going to have a monocoque with more steel. Always exactly the same thing. Front longitudinal. Double wishbone is probably what they have. And then double wishbone in the back too. Actually, you know what? They might even have multi-link. I'm not sure, but we'll go with that. So we're going to go with an inline six. Now we're going to grab quickly the dimensions of that engine. Sorry, I meant M2. So the bore is 84. Uh, 89 points. Wow, this is a very over square engine. Are all engines just over square? Hmm. Oh, okay, well, we're not going front wheel drive, so that's fine. Then we're going to have dual overhead cans, four valves, aluminium, no variable valve lift. We're going to go with cast, cast, cast. Uh, we'll leave the compression for now. We're going to go with a higher cam profile, variable valve timing all. We're not going to bother with a turbo. Going to go injection, direct injection, per cylinder, and performance. Even though the BMWs are very well known for having a split type manifold all of the time on their performance vehicles, which allows them to have a long runner for low RPM and then a short fat runner for a higher RPM. But this will have to do. Then they probably run with a premium and have a little bit of extra compression, more ignition timing, more RPM, even though it's probably going to break. We're going to go with a short cast, a high flow freeway. Reverse flow and baffled will probably be what we do here. Yeah, these pistons aren't liking it, so we're going to have to go with uh, a little bit higher quality engine internals. Okay, so how much power does this thing create? 272. Oh, okay, so it is fuel injected. Okay, well, we can... That's the fuel injected. It is turbocharged, so we'll go with that. We're aiming for 272. That's a lot of power. My goodness. 13 PSI is probably enough, and we'll go up to like 14 PSI. And let's see what we can do here to get an extra 100 kilowatts out of this thing. How is that even possible? What? Right. Oh, wait, hold on. Here we go. Exhaust time. There we go. <laughs> Well, there's our power. Uh, let's go back here and then go with uh, a performance tune again. Maybe even a fuel economy tune. Maybe. We'll take this up to about 10 PSI. We want to keep the uh, power kind of smooth because it's a BMW. They, they're known for creating really nice performance vehicles. And then we see what exhaust size we want. We're getting close. We... We just got to get it up. Sorry, man. Just we, we got a little bit of that ED. It's causing us a little bit of problem here. We just have to get it up. So we are on point. 465 Newton meters of torque. Okay, so we got the right amount of power, but a little... Whoa! At 1400 RPM? Whoa, bro. No way. Oh, that's, that's going to be hard. That's going to be really, really hard to do. Oh, I don't even, I don't even know how to do that. There has to be something that uh, automation is missing that is required to uh, work properly. Oh, we are so close. How about just a little bit of extra pressure? There we go. 271.8. That's close enough. 300, uh, 480, uh, 38. Okay, we're still off, but at least the power band comes in early at 3,000 RPM. This is not going to be particularly comfortable, <laughs> but let's move on. So we're going to go with the convertible because we are going to convert this to an actually open top convertible. I don't know how this is going to work out completely, but uh, I'm excited to see how that goes. But we're going to do that after we do the rest of the work. So we need a transmission. We're going to go rear wheel drive. I'm going to guess it's probably best with a manual. Six speed, but then again, it's BMW. BMW Europeans are very good at having lots of gears in their gearbox. So 
no, we're still going to go with a six speed. Then we'll go with an electronic LSD. Because I'm assuming that's probably what BMW has, since I know specifically that's what Volkswagens have. And then radial. Oh, they do love their semi slicks uh, on their BMW sports cars. So we're going to go with something like an 18 inch, make the tire walls a little bit bigger, make it really big on the rear, like really big. Magnesium go with some really nice vented. We're not going to bother going with uh, something ridiculous like um, carbon ceramics because that's a little too high end for what this car is. Then we're going to have fully clad. We're not going to have the complete downforce because that is too much uh, money basically <laughs> BMW. Then a little bit of brake airflow because I always like a little bit of brake airflow. We're going to have just a 2x2 two two sports uh, probably have a premium infotainment then oh, they I know that they switched over to electric at some point that electric variable but electric variable sucks in BMG drive so we're gonna go with that we're gonna go electronic stability control because it's BMW we're gonna go standard I'll probably go with that uh, it's a bit hard to tell what they would do this is probably based on an older car so we'll go standard 2000s then we want they probably have active in some way then the dampers themselves can be just basic and then sports though i'm actually going to prefer race <laughs> you know what sports likes to have stiffer springs and race likes to have stiffer shocks so why don't we have a blend of the two and just have stiffer springs up by race's end yeah that's pretty good right and we'll drop that ride height. This is muscle? Okay, I mean, I suppose you could consider a BMW M series a muscle car. Lots of power up the front, potentially a manual, rear wheel drive. I mean, it ticks all the boxes, too much power, but you'd think that it would be different since it uh, can handle said power. <laughs> Which is not a, being, uh, not, a, not a muscle car specialty. Uh, I think we're getting close to the beautification section of this video. Uh, what else do we need to do? Oh, wow. This thing has a pretty nice top speed. Look at that. Got a top speed of 306 kilometers an hour. Pretty nifty, huh? And 4.7 to 100 for a car which is going to be relatively cheap. We've got a little bit of wheel spin issue, but we can make our wheels a little bit bigger. We can make our wheels there we go beautification set oh wait hold on brakes first brakes 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 though this is all going to change because we're about to put aerodynamics on it all right let's go to the beautification part right after i make a paint color <laughs> i always forget that so what is bmw blue yeah let's have a look what uh what's the there we go oh it's a very bright blue so maybe if we go a lighter blue and then with a bit of pearlescent lap bring it back it's hard to tell which color to make this for a BMW. I suppose we could just go that, since the colors don't translate very well anyway. Yeah, I think we're just going to go with the basic that. Okay, on to beautification. Alrighty then, here we have the DNW uh, decapitated. So the, uh, yeah, uh, I, oh, I'm not entirely happy with this uh, setup, but it, it's pretty decent. Like, it, oh, maybe it's pretty bad. I tried to make the glass like transparent, but it took three pieces and none of them <laughs> like going to each other really nicely. So yeah, it's all a bit botched job. The rest of the car, I'm not too... Uh, ugh. The more I look at this grill, the more I hate it. The back end, I use some custom lights. The front end, I use custom lights. Uh, I like the body shape, but I don't have any control over that. So let's uh, go do the aerodynamics quickly. I'm gonna just give it like a whole bunch of aerodynamics. Sweet, that looks good. Wheels, we look good here. Brakes, we still look good. And we have ABS, so this is fantastic. Let's go 
chip this thing around the uh, test track at least once. What do we got? A 215, you know? Quite respectable for a car that's not a supercar. Uh, how are we going for suspension? Our suspension looks fine. All right, let's go export. I'm really disappointed that it's still only under muscle, but sure, why not? You know, under the white light, this actually looks a whole lot... I was about to say better, but then I saw the front grille, and once again, I'm reminded that... Ugh. You know what? Oh, I should do something about that. But I also don't care. Ooh, here we go. The windshield is bugged. Yep, that is not how that's meant to look. Well, what happens if I go into cabin view? Is that cabin view? That's not cabin view. What the hell is that? Anyway, I have made it European and it seemed as if it put me on the right side, which means that the driving position must be set by the modifier uh, creator, which would be automation in this case. And they are New Zealander, which means that it would be on this side. So maybe I should have done that, but whatever. We're going to give this vehicle a bit of a shakedown. Oh, nice suspension. Feels good. A bit of understeer. Not too much oversteer. That's good. You know what? Pretty nice! Except for that. Let's just ignore that. That that didn't happen. We'll just pretend, yes, it didn't happen. Yeah, so I, I took it up here because I thought, you know what? This really seems like a, a, a mountaintop cruiser along with a city street. It's cruiser. Oh, whoops. Well, at least we got that safety that I put on. What is this cylinder? Oh, that'd be one of the headlights. Well then, let's just pull you out. Okay, well... There goes another headlight. Pull you out. Eh, thank you. And onwards and upwards, as they say. Oh boy. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, okay. <laughs> it feels as if it's had more power since the accident. <gasps> and onwards. Oh, we're missing... We have a wheel that's not making contact with the ground. Well, that's going to make steering a little bit difficult. That's, uh, yeah, that's problematic. Well, you got to make it to the mechanics. So, this is a good test to see how well it controls while striving at full pelt towards the mechanics. Okay, well, <laughs> let's undo that. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I think this vehicle is pretty all right. Do I think it's a fantastic car? No. Do I think it's a pretty decent car? Yes. What I'm really uh, happy about is the fact that that steep power curve that happens about 3,000 uh, RPM doesn't completely just go bonkers. So we're going to turn ESC off and see now what happens. Still quite stable. All right, we're not dealing with any sort of issue, really. Uh, we're coming up to a fast, what's probably a hairpin. Brakes handle fine, a little bit wobbly there, but that's all good. Okay, yeah, it controls itself really nicely. Actually, I think it might handle a little bit better without that. <laughs> oh, well, that's not saying much for the uh, ESC then. Yeah. Unless those were some janky-ass corners, I think this handles better without uh, ESC on. Yeah, this thing handles nicely. And it also feels as if it doesn't just want to push wide when it starts to break. <gasps> oh, wow. Recovered itself. This is pretty good. I think we might go take this over to the automation test track. Wow. Ooh, oh, okay. I was thinking like, well, we're going to crash, but we're going to go over it straight away. But it just didn't crash. It just controlled itself without a ESC and anything. Wow. This is a pretty good one. Okay, well, there we go. Right! Let's do a lap! With a, without a windshield. Why are the... Oh, okay, I didn't realize that the... Because the windows didn't paint the outside before... Sorry, from uh, the inside of the windows didn't paint before. So I'm a little surprised that it's painting them now, which if I hadn't known that was going to happen, I wouldn't have bothered to do the stuff on the front windshield. So, note to people, don't bother doing the insides of uh, the outsides of windshields to see through them. They are painted and look a little less jank. But the fact that I've done it makes it look jank. So that's unfortunate, I suppose. But not much I can do about that now. 
Now this thing so far is actually taking the corners really nicely and really smoothly. I kind of want to do one lap with and one lap without ESC on. So far we've had it on and it's been a very uneventful, rather smooth race. But we're going to see now what the top speed is and then see what we can do around the corner. If it can do over 200, I'll be happy. If it can do over 200 and... I was about to say 220, but I don't even think it'll reach 220. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I felt as if that could have gone much faster around that corner without any problem. Oh, wow. It's even holding on to this negative camber corner really nicely. Bro, this is a good car. Better than what I was expecting. Like, it's not a supercar. It has like a top end kind of sports car. It's really nice. Brakes aren't too shabby, aren't amazing, aren't blistering, but then again, we've only got uh, just regular slotted and they're not ginormous attached to ginormous wheels. They're just quite big wheels. And you know, you got to keep those big wheels turning. Big wheel, keep on turning. I'm probably going to go to Copy Strike for that, aren't I? Oh no, Copy Strike. I don't even know if I'm going to put the song in yet, so I could, I could just be saying that me saying, Big Wheels Keep On Turning is so accurate that YouTube is going to strike me for doing a cover. <laughs> uh, oh, and the last corner, which I always kind of use as a judge to figure out whether a car is good, because a lot of cars can just lose traction on such a flat, small, sharp corner. All right, 224, that's actually, isn't that what uh, automation said? Wow, that means that this car is very controllable because for me to get a time that's close to what actually automation says means that it's consistent. So yeah, oh yeah. Let's retry without ESC and see if we can do it better than a 124. Now we're not gonna bother going with an automa uh, uh, manual uh, gearbox currently, we're just gonna keep it doing the automatic thing because uh, I don't like shifting gears on uh, a controller. I don't even like doing it with my racing wheel setup that I've recently got set up. But the reason why I'm not using that here is one, I don't know if VMG can do it, but I haven't even tried. But mainly because I haven't uh, got a monitor set up for it. I've actually just got it set up for VR and I've been racing a little bit of a set of Corsa using VR and the steering wheel setup, which is a really a lot better. Okay, well, shit. Uh, let, let's give this a quick retry. Now, where was I? Something about a set of Corsa and VR, yes. So, I've been trying to race that game with steering wheel and uh, I tried doing it with uh, controller. I haven't tried mouse and keyboard yet. Neither of them were really doing much for me. But then I tried to do it in VR, which is something I've been meaning to do for a long time. And suddenly, I could find my breaking points. I could find my turn-ins. I could look over and see where I was meant to exit from the corner properly. And my lap times tumbled, like, I think five to 10 seconds just immediately. Like, I'm not the most experienced person. But, uh, that was, that was dramatic. I get the feeling if I had a lot more experience and I was actually really good without VR, the gap would have been smaller, but I still do think that most people would find an advantage from actually uh, going into VR for sim racing. So then you can properly tell those corner exits without having to press an extra button or an extra joystick move to look side to side, which really jankifies the whole racing uh, experience. Ah, uh, well, I've bum bummed it. I've binned it. That was unfortunate. I was doing so well as well. We still got a fairly decent time because the rest of the racetrack has been fairly kind to us. Oh, I think a, a manual transmission there would have helped really well because it kind of missed its own gear shift. <gasps> okay, yep. <laughs> That's a sign of a not so great. I reckon without those two stuff ups, I would have done a lot better, but we equaled our time. Boom! I hope you enjoyed this video. I really did myself. Actually, hold on. <gasps> we actually beat it still. We beat it by 0.38 of a second. So, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
I will see you in the next one. And, uh, three videos were harmed in the making of this one. Uh, so, suck on that.